Good day to you all. I'm Danilo Evangelista, and welcome to our weekly hurricane season discussion videos. Um, this week, we have a lot to go over, including new models and, of course, reviewing current factors for the hurricane season. So let's get right on with it. How many days starting off till June 1st? Our countdown that we do every single week now, since we're under 100 days. This week, we're at 77 days, and next week, we'll be at 70 only 10 more days till a full 60 days to go and that'll mean we're getting much closer to the hurricane season for sure um, i want to start off though with a look at what's going on globally because usually we talk about what's going on in the atlantic and factors for the hurricane season which is only still two and a half months away but always as always there's always something happening in the global tropics as there is the southern hemisphere too and there is actually activity going on we have Tropical Storm 18, I think this is named by the J Joint Typhoon Warning Center, and then there's Tropical Storm Megan. This, as far as I'm aware, is supposed to impact Australia, potentially heavy rain, gusty winds, typical tropical cyclone impacts. And as far as I'm seeing, as I've seen with this month, this with this storm, Tropical Storm 18, this will probably um, move on out to the east and maybe strengthen further, though I'm not entirely sure, but just pointing out there is activity elsewhere besides um just the atlantic it's not like there's we only focus on atlantic and eastern pacific activity and sometimes the western pacific um come may june and july and through the summer um but there's also the southern hemisphere as well always tropical cyclone activity happening at some in some place at some point at any time um during the year and i have a blank tab we don't want that um, moving on, though, to sea surface temperature anomalies. Um, this is a look at um, yesterday. This is actually March 14th. Let me see if they updated recently. No, they have not updated the map for the 15th yet. Um, that's fine. We'll just use the 14th right now. Um, very warm sea surface temperature anomalies remaining in the Atlantic. Just look at all these. Um, two degrees Celsius. That's really potent throughout the eastern MDR. And also in the Enzo region, look towards the Pacific, you're starting to see more blue anomalies begin to show up. Um, the Nino 1, 2, and 3 regions have been cooling down drastically over the last few weeks, um, over the last week especially. And that is definitely a symptom of that colder water that we talked about below the surface associated with what will help develop this La Nina. That's now beginning to make its way to the surface and worse, and it's starting to show um, especially with these cold anomalies, as I like to call it, the cracks in the El Nino are especially starting to show, and that is certainly a sign we are heading towards La Nina over the next several weeks. Um, but really quickly, though, I just wanted to zoom out on a global scale just to kind of put into perspective of how warm the MDR is. I mean, just look at that, man. That's just crazy. Look at all these anomalies and look at the rest of the tropics, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, the Atlantic, and even you look at the Southern Hemisphere too, we, we are on a completely different scale when it comes to how warm the energy is focused in the Atlantic. Just look at all these consistent two Celsius, even some three Celsius anomalies in there, and nowhere else in the, in the globe are the anomalies that warm, except maybe um, the Southern Hemisphere um, so the Southern Atlantic, um, which that is less relevant since the Southern Atlantic isn't usually as active, though we sometimes get a few weak um, garbage, tropical storms, if you know what I mean. Um, but bottom line, the Atlantic is very warm, especially in comparison to the tropics in the, in the Eastern Pacific right now. It's even warmer than the El Nino is right now, which crazy to say, but it is. And this is really going to be a very important factor, especially when it comes to where the warm anomalies are in terms of where the rising motion is going to focus during the hurricane season this year. And judging by the Atlantic, it really seems like we're focusing all the energy there. And all the climate models, they expect this to continue, especially if we're expecting a La Nina to develop along the equatorial Pacific. That robs the Pacific of rising air and convection which in turn helps the Atlantic. And on top of this really warm Atlantic signature, that is certainly something of great concern. Um, and I'll just show you further La Nina on its way. The Nino 3.4 index, now this is updated yesterday too. 
Um, so kind of day behind here. We're still waiting for today's update, but we'll just use um what we have from yesterday for now. Should probably be the same thing. Probably shows the same picture, so why not? Um, but the Nino 3.4 region, we've been saying La Nina is on its way, and we mean it because this is as of January first. This was at the beginning of the year. We were all the way at above two degrees Celsius in terms of the development of this El Nino. We were in super Nino territory by the time we got to the new year. And just look at how much we've dropped off um, since then. We're now into March and we're on a completely different level here. This is really strong super Nino territory. And now we're well below the threshold of around 1.5. 1.5 Celsius in the Nino 3.4 is usually the territory we look at for a strong El Nino, and we're, we're down near 1 Celsius. That is the threshold. We're nearing the threshold and about to crash below the threshold for what we would even consider a moderate strength Nino. So we've really tanked off, and over the next coming weeks, this will just continue, honestly. And we've seen it happen. Look at this. This is of the sea surface temperature anomalies below the surface and what we've been talking about for the last few weeks look at these cold anomalies below the surface beginning to make their way to the surface and wiping out all the remaining warmth for the el nino the el nino really depended on all these warm anomalies that we saw on um, below the surface and let me just really quickly show this see in january Look at all those warm anomalies, 1.5, 0.5, 1, even 2 Celsius anomalies below the equatorial um, Pacific. That's what helped us. Um, that's what was with when we had this super El Nino. And now you can definitely see why all the anomalies are taking off. Look at all these. Look at all that warmth just completely gone. And now we're starting to see it replaced with cold. And this is what's going to help. And this is this will probably continue over the next several weeks, and soon enough, all of these anomalies will begin to reach the surface, and they'll spread westward, and we will get our La Nina to continue. And even the SOI is beginning to reflect this now. Look at that. We were we were talking about a really strong SOI um, several weeks ago. We had a very strong 30-day average near negative 20 points, um, which is very indicative of an atmosphere in El Nino, and now look at where we are. We're now back to neutral. We're, we're even a little positive. We're at 1.25 points above neutral, which is a lot more indicative, one, of neutral, um, because the values typically for El Nino and La Nina is seven points on either side. So we're at neutral, but most importantly, we're now much less reflective of an atmosphere that was favoring El Nino um, now than we were before. So things are definitely changing. The Pacific is changing um, as expected. All the climate models show this, and I'll even show you going forward the zonal wind anomalies. Um, you could see why, um, by the way, just to kind of give you an outline a little bit of what we're looking at. This black line, above the black line is the past. It's um, from February up until today or yesterday when this map updated, and below the black line is the future and what the European predicts in the future. And one thing is of very important note, you notice all of these greens and these blues, this is representative of trades. And this is what we got right near the dateline too. We got very strong trades to occur for at least a good few weeks um, from late February up until this past week. And that's why we've seen the La Nina tank um, big time. Uh, the El Nino, I mean, La Nina is coming, you know, kind of get mixed between the the few, the two, but you get what I mean. El Nino is really weakened, and you can see we've had a huge increase in trades over the equatorial Pacific over the next, over the last few weeks, and how it looks like over the next few weeks, well, we could see a return to some more westerly winds, but as I mentioned before, these westerly winds at this point in time, they aren't really doing much to help um, El Nino development anymore more than just helping it hold on for dear life. And this westerly wind burst too, it looks like it'll even be shorter lived. This will probably only last from the rest of the month out up until maybe early April when we'll have not even a strong westerly wind burst. You could go back to all the way to early February, mid to early February, you could see where these westerly wind anomalies were. They were um, at the top end of the scale. They were, we saw a bunch of these orange and reds, um, especially near the date line. This time around, 
we only see weak oranges and some yellows. So not even a strong westerly wind burst we're looking at. And obviously the SOI will tank, but generally what I'm trying to point out is we're beginning to shift in the atmosphere from El Nino to La Nina. And that is definitely reflective in the Pacific. And that'll show even more over the next several weeks. And speaking of the future, um, the CPC, basically a pr another prediction for La Nina, this is the CPC. Um, we look at this every single month, they release their March outlook. And what do, you, what, what do they show? As you would expect, La Nina conditions to strengthen over the next several weeks, um, over the next several months. Um, this goes by seasons and most importantly, August, September, October, the peak months of the hurricane season, the CPC now has over 80% chance of La Nina expected by the time we get to the peak. They're all, all these models are lining up and we also have new models now from um, the UK Met. Um, this is the UK Met, by the way, came out um, for March. Uh, all of them are indicative. They're all showing a really active signal, um, especially with the UK Met showing once again, very classic precipitation look focused in the deep tropics of the Atlantic. And also very important too, look at all these precipitation anomalies over Africa. That's another important factor because that relates to the African monsoon. And if we have more precipitation anomalies above normal over Africa, that means we'll have a stronger African monsoon, which is another very important factor too um, for the hurricane season. And look at that, interestingly enough, these drier patches in the Southern Atlantic near um, southern Western Africa probably means that the inter, the ITCZ could be even more north this year. So that'll mean waves could possibly be more north in the MDR. Just an interesting thing to look at. Um, quite interesting too. Maybe we'll see more northerly waves and potentially more chances for MDR formations um, this season. Um, maybe that's what the model's hinting at. Um, but that's the UK Met and obviously the, C, the C3S um, anomaly here too. Look at that, same thing. It's honestly kind of incredible. Just look at the UK Met and compare that to the C3S. It really is just completely incredible how all these models, they're just lining up. They all show the same thing. We looked at the European, we looked at the CFS, we looked at the CANSIPS and even all the other models and they all have this very distinct look in the tropical Atlantic, very focused precipitation anomalies in the tropics into the Caribbean and into the Gulf. Very distinctive look that they're showing, which definitely indicates rising motion in the tropics in the Atlantic and a very favorable overall pattern. And sea surface temperature anomalies too, this is the UK Met. Very interestingly, look at all these blues. Again, another model showing and another sort of thing, if you will, predicting La Nina, look at that. Um, very um, strong La Nina signature in the Pacific, and very importantly, the Atlantic, very warm. And even that classic, you know, AMO signature too, with the horseshoe going all the way from Greenland down through the Canary Current and into the tropics. And these anomalies too, this, this, the UK Met has, I think, as much as one Celsius in many places, and actually even warmer than that. Um, throughout the entire tropics, um, very much of a signature too, on top of what seems like colder anomalies in the subtropics. And here's the C3S in comparison, same exact look, even that C, you can see C3S one, even 1 1.5 Celsius in some areas, maybe, I don't know, I'm gonna have to look at the scale to really point out exactly what contours, let's actually do that right now. So this is neutral. One, two, three, four, let's see. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's right near one Celsius that the C3S has all the way from um, the Canary Current into the deep tropics. And in the deep tropics, especially, let me see, one, two, three, four, even five. And that is right near one Celsius on average, it seems like, by the C3S in the deep tropics. That's a lot of energy, especially to be focused in the deep tropics and this is, and we can, we could definitely say, looking at this model, not to cast it out because the fact that the UK Met 2 is showing it, as well as the European and all the other climate models are in good agreement that we'll get this kind of signature to show up in the Atlantic this year 
And <clears throat> it all lines up. It all lines up for a very active look. And it is all definitely interesting for sure. All the models, they're in agreement. And it seems like now, especially that we're headed into March and getting closer to the season and they're all still showing this, it just shows the amount of level of certainty that the models have this year. Um, and certainly gives us the certainty that this year will potentially be an active season. And it definitely, it just looks like that. It just looks that way for sure. It looks that way, honestly, more and more, the more you look at it every single week. There's really nothing else to say about it um, in terms of that way. Um, but now there were, now that we're through with all the current, you know, data that has come out this week, want to move on to severe weather. Uh, we've actually had quite a bit of severe weather recently over the last week or so. Um, just yesterday and Thursday, there was a severe weather outbreak. I know that there was a pretty devastating tornado in um, Ohio, I think, or Ohio in, or Indiana. I don't know, but there was a devastating tornado there. Luckily, in terms of severe weather, they'll be clear for today. Um, no severe weather expected for um, the, the kind of Midwest region. There is some severe weather expected down in Texas, a slight risk in effect, some places including San Antonio, um, Missouri City, Texas, Sugar Land, but that is kind of south, not really, especially in the areas that we've seen severe weather over the last two or three days. Um, that does clear out though, marginal risk then in effect for the Gulf Coast states for day two and then for day three, we have a marginal risk a very small marginal risk only for portions of northern Florida. And then after that, going um, for days four to eight, no severe weather expected um, by the Storm Prediction Center, or at least no significant chances, which is definitely good, definitely a much needed break. And hopefully it does stay that way. Really quickly, looking at the weather.gov site in the National Weather Service, what do they show? All the same, of course. Um, went to, although they do actually have, I believe, red flag warnings in effect for portions of the Dakotas, and I think that's Minnesota. This, that's Wisconsin or Minnesota. Yeah, that's was that's Minnesota. Trying to get my geography right, but I think I'm doing pretty good. Red flag warnings in effect, and then there are a few winter storm warnings, probably mountain snow that we get, uh, but nothing of concern, and that's good. We don't have any significant weather happening right now. Oh, um, at least right now, and hopefully it stays that way, especially with what happened. <clears throat> um, my throat kind of closed up a little bit, but you get what I mean. Um, lucky we don't have any significant weather happening right now across the United States, and it definitely doesn't seem like, at least for the next several days or so, hopefully we don't get anything um, too crazy. But with that being said, um, I'm going to wrap it up for today's discussion. Certainly looking very interesting for the hurricane season. One thing is for sure is that the picture is growing more more clear as the weeks go by. And it's just a matter of, honestly, now, how does this all play out together? And what comes out of this, honestly? Because it seems like very much so that the warm, the warm Atlantic we have will very much persist throughout the season. It's just a matter of how this La Nina will come in. Not a matter of if, because it's looking pretty certain that it will come in, um, but it's just about how these factors all play out together and what kind of season that does produce. And obviously for that, we can only wait till when we get to the season in order to see it, but we will soon, 77 days, and that's gonna be 70 next week. Time is definitely flowing by, and before you know it, it'll be June 1st. Um, but with that being said, I'm gonna wrap it up for today's video. For this week this week's video hope you liked it like comment subscribe share with family and friends all that good stuff and we'll see you back next week